Holy Spirit mm -hmm. manifesting, at, but also that every to the prophet mm -hmm. that was very important to her. Like, but at the baseline, so there was there was a livable wage, so therefore there was a minimum salary yeah. that yes. she should earn. That's oh, yeah. right. Because everybody should be able to own a home, you know, yeah. even no matter how small it is. And then there was a sharing in the upside with the employee sharing. Absolutely. Like. And the profit sharing. She say insisted on that profit sharing from the very beginning. That foundation, the values, the vision of love, um, the, 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 the equity, the principle of equity and, mm -hmm. and willingness to share, it is, this is what has created the foundation for JMB and we still continue to build on that. Her legacy that she'll be proud of is that that is, that is being passed on. It continues in every interaction with anybody who comes in contact with JMB. And it continues, and I can see in her children, that we have chosen it and we strive for it to create that kind of space. And it continues in her grandchildren. And that inside of her grandchildren, that the through us, we have been able to give them the space to choose who they would like to express themselves as. And so the box has been completely shattered. <laughs> That's her legacy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Duncan Memorial Lecture. We take a break right now. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. You're watching the seventh annual John Duncan Memorial Lecture. The theme for this year's lecture is Digital Entrepreneurship Breaking Boundaries. With the world facing COVID-19 pandemic, the theme is timely. The International Labour Organization, ILO, was reporting up to June this year that there was an expected 14% drop in working hours globally due to the coronavirus pandemic. As the world grapples with COVID-19, businesses have been forced to send home workers and make positions redundant. But here's an idea. Why not try digital entrepreneurship? And for those who are already way ahead of the game, those who are in the industry, why not create new opportunities and expand your venture? If you have never heard of digital entrepreneurship or if you are seeking new opportunities in the industry, our next presenter will tell you all about the industry. Mr. Tyrone Wilson is dubbed a serial entrepreneur, having founded three companies so far, Ezines Limited, Vertical Creative, and iCreate Institute. His niche is combining the creative and cultural industry, an area which he's a visionary. This afternoon, we speak with Mr. Tyrone Wilson in his capacity of founder, president, and CEO of iCreate Institute. Mr. Wilson, thank you so much for joining us. And tell us, digital entrepreneurship, what is it? And is it a good industry for Jamaica? All right, thank you. Um, first, I'd like to thank the JMMB Foundation, Joan Duncan Foundation, and the UTEC family for having me. It's always a pleasure to come back and share, you know, somewhere where I've nurtured my entrepreneurial spirits and, and discipline. So um, really a pleasure to be here to speak about uh, digital entrepreneurship in such a, you know, um, transformative period. You know, um, COVID-19 has changed so much and, um, it, you know, want to encourage individuals to push their business to consider moving on digital platforms as a means of surviving, starting new businesses and so forth. And digital entrepreneurship to me, you know, my specific tap um, topic that I'll be speaking on today is um, understanding the digital customer journey, which is a key part of growing any business online. How we understand people's interaction on a digital um, platform, on the various digital platforms around the world. So in short, the digital customer journey is the part the customers take from initial contact online to a conversion, which is pretty much a sale. And there are many different digital um, platforms or digital channels, and, but the top five, you know, in terms of interactions, uh, mobile, um, which we all use, or phones and so forth, online marketplace aggregators like um, Travelocity and those travel platforms who aggregate content and deals and so forth, uh, video, which is one of the most consumed content types online today. Uh, display ads, which are, you know, if you go on an app and so forth, you'll see an ad that pops up. You know, those are display ads. And of course, one we can't um, ignore, which is email. Uh, so those markets are, <coughs> you know, those channels are five of the top channels as it relates to digital. Uh, but in understanding the digital customer journey, there are five other areas that we have to contemplate all businesses, whether it's a little vending shop on the road that is looking to move to online or, you know, a bank like JMMB, a financial institution looking to go online. We have to consider the digital customer journey is consisted of browse, compare, contemplate, purchase and returning customers. And I, do, I know I don't have a lot of time, so I'll try to go through these as quickly as possible. Uh, the browsing stage is um, on the digital customer journey is typically the same as if you enter a store. You know, I'm just browsing. I'm looking if I like these pair of shoes or whatever it is. It's the same online. Individuals engage with your website as a means of browsing. They want to see what you offer, what you have available and so forth. Um, and to see if this is a company that they want to purchase, you know, whatever it is that they're looking for. They might move on your social media pages, right? Um, they might look at buyers' reviews. So they might go on some of these platforms that do reviews and so forth and to see what customers have to say about your product. Um, and 
they might also look on videos that you would have developed. You know, we like to call these um, the acknowledgement layer. So these are pretty much videos or any other content type that really introduces the customers to your product or service. Apple, for example, is really good at that when they introduce a new product. You go on the website and you see a nice video about how they build the product, what it does, all of these things and so forth. That's in the browsing stage. And during the, <clears throat> the browsing stage, in terms of businesses moving online, there are some tools to consider um, to use. Uh, CRM tool, those are customer relationship management tools such as Monday, that comes sales platforms such as um, Salesforce. Um, they can look at automation tools. We're in the fourth industrial revolution now, so it's all about how do we automate our processes and so forth. So, like Zapier is one tool that connects all the different platforms that you use so that they can communicate with each other and automate your process. So, an example is someone go on your website. But like a product, they request more information. They get an autoresponder with the information, and then within that link, they can buy. Within all of this that is happening, all of that is on your sales force, for example, or your sales management tool, and you can track these things. And because it's digital, there is a footprint that is left. And that footprint brings a buyer persona, you know, start to understand who are the people that are interested in your product or services. Because it's online, the part about data, availability and so forth. If you're logged in with your Twitter account or your Facebook, a, a, a company that is selling on the back end knows that, you know, Donna checked out this and, you know, she is between ages this and that and she works here and she does this. So right away you start to get a buyer persona involved and that's part of the key part in terms of the, the, the digital customer journey. The second stage is compare. You know, once someone goes on your website, you can't assume they're only going, they only will be going on your platform alone. They might want to check out another institution to see, you know, if the price is the same. They want to see what customers are saying, if they'll, you know, they hate your product or they love this one more. And within that stage, you start to get to understand the audience, demographics and so forth. You know, um, what they like, you start, the, the preferences begin to reveal within they live in that kind of digital footprint, right? Male or female, you know, color they love, the platforms they visit in the last 24 hours, all of these things are available. And it's, it creates such a dynamic opportunity for businesses that are looking to go online. Because, you know, when someone just walk in your store, your physical store, Unless they fill out a survey or something, you really don't know they were there. You don't know who they are. You might just capture them on video, but you don't know what's the name, what's the age, all of these things. Digital creates an opportunity for you to immerse yourself in data to help to you know, have more informed customers and to serve them more. Uh, third one now is the contemplation stage, similar to the browse, but as a business, right, um, that is, you know, conducting transactions online. During the contemplation stage, you have a lot more resources available to you. So if someone comes in a physical environment, you're really just, unless they leave the number, you're not able to really call them or follow up with them. But on the digital scene, once they start to leave that footprint, their email addresses, all of these different things, their social media platform, they like the picture on your Instagram, you know who they are. During the contemplation stage, now you can know you know, have content marketing strategies. Content marketing, for example, is a subtle way of promoting your product or service to a group of individuals in a non-intrusive way that really doesn't annoy. It's not like an ad. It's really like, you know, like, like this video, for example. This is content marketing, right? This is content marketing. We're sharing content in a non-intrusive way with viewers right now about digital entrepreneurship. And that is one way in which on the digital marketing platform, digital customer journey, we get to engage with people in a, in a, you know, in a more interactive way, right? Right. I, and I know there's so many things that we want to pursue along this line. I uh, but Tyrone, <laughs> there is a question uh, of, of, for all our viewers joining us via social media. Yes. We're going to take a question and we'll have more questions later on. No okay? problem. But we'll take one now before the break. Are the digital technologies and infrastructure that is needed to operate a fully digital business 
widely available. Would you say that? Definitely. Um, there are a lot of free um, software out there, um, trial versions that start, you, you begin to try those out and then move into more advanced ones. There are a lot of open source platforms. Um, just typically when you look at Google for business also is one way um, that is available also. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we go to a break in a while. Just, um, just to remind you that uh, you may join us uh, and link us uh, via hashtag Joan Duncan Lecture. Just go to our social media pages, JMMB UTech or UTech Jamaica. We take a break right now and we'll be right back. Thank you for staying with us. And if you're just joining us, welcome to the seventh annual Joan Duncan Memorial Lecture. We're talking about digital entrepreneurship, breaking boundaries. And in this segment, we'll now speak with Ms. Stacy Kirk, CEO of Quality Works Consulting Group in California, USA, which is an international software consulting firm. Now, Ms. Kirk, thanks for joining us. So far, we have been looking at the strengths and opportunities in digital entrepreneurship. Tyrone Wilson with Tyrone Wilson. What is your view on this venture? Well, thank you. I'm, I'm honored to be here today. This is a very unique time in history, like nothing we've ever seen before. There is no response plan that could have prepared us for this year. We've experienced job losses either personally or within our family. But there are companies and businesses that have succeeded despite the pandemic. 
I can't go more than a day or two hearing about the successes of companies that were able to pivot. And so as a solo entrepreneur, as a corporate entrepreneur, this is a great time to come up with a new plan and strategy. When I started my company, uh, one of my first companies 20 years ago, I had a little personal funding and a crazy idea. And that company was short lived, uh, mainly because I didn't do a lot of planning. And so when I decided to expand my Los Angeles operation to Kingston, I did not want to have that same mistake again. And therefore, I spent three months planning and detailed research, creating a business plan that I needed in order to start my company. And it was very valuable that I did that. It allowed me to get into the Technology Innovation Center, TIC, and it helped with the execution of my first year. But I have to tell you that the days of having those 30 page business plans are over. If you would do what I did five years ago and, and take those three months, you really have, um, you risk losing an opportunity, the opportunity to take advantage of what consumers and businesses need today. I was fortunate to be exposed to something called the Lean Campus. And it's something that I use with our clients and we use when we have a new product or service that we want um, to, to, to initiate. And you can go online and you can, you can print this out. It's one page. And I want to share with you what it means to be lean and how do you can use the Lean Campus. You first will start with understanding your problem. And that means being able to create a short description with the three top problems that you want to solve. And then you want to look at your customer segments. Who are the customers and the products that you want to service? And then can you create the segments for those customers? That could be local versus foreign. That could be student versus teacher. Or maybe it's by their interests. And then you want to understand what is your unique value proposition? What are the primary reasons that you are different and unique and that users will appreciate what you have to offer? And then what is your solution that demonstrates that value proposition? As Tyrone mentioned, there are many channels and strategic partnerships of how you plan to reach your customer. Jot those down along with understanding your costs, your fixed and variable, and then your revenue streams. That is, how are you going to make the money that you need? What are your ways of getting the, the earnings? Is it subscription? Is it through time and materials? And then the last area is probably the hardest, which is what is your unfair advantage? That is something that you can do that is not easily copied or bought. I encourage you, like I said, it's one page, fill that out and it replaces what used to be that 30 page business plan. And then you're not done. There's a critical step that often a lot of entrepreneurs miss um, because you're so excited you have a plan and you're ready to go. And that is validation and testing. And as Tyrone mentioned, the importance of the customer journey, you need to know now is the next step. Will people buy your product that you're offering? And will they pay for it? You have to test often and validate. And I'll repeat that to build a great product, you have to test often to build something great. And there are a few deliverables in terms of what you do for testing and validation that I'll share with you. And they go in stages of time and complexity. First, they start with a proof of concept. A proof of concept focuses on answering the question, is what I plan to do feasible? Can it be done? If you are selling shoes, that is, can I get the products that I need, the supplies I need to sell it? If you're building a technology, is can this technology be built? It's something that you can do with your advisors, you can do with, with the people within your organizations and friends. The next step after that is building a prototype. Now the prototype looks at the customer's perspective and is this something that they want to buy and would purchase? You can do this one again with your advisors, but also you want to target customers that can give you real feedback. You don't want to necessarily use your friends because they don't always give you the, the, the real truth that you need to hear. And then the final stage was building a MVP. That is a minimum viable product. And we've been taught, many of us, that we need to think things out thoroughly. 
we need to make sure that we finish everything completely and then we'll share. The problem with that is that you build something that only has your perspective. You don't get other people's feedback and what they value in it. So I encourage you to find the smallest product or the smallest service that you can offer. This is how Jeff Bezos uh, built out world domination with Amazon, starting first with books and moving to everything else. Uh, when I came to Jamaica, I started with one service to validate that there was um, the feasibility and viability and then grew from there. And there are many tools that can help you. If you're a freelancer, I encourage you to use a local base of freelancing um, platform, The Hive. If you are trying to get a digital presence, okay. you can now do that in a matter of okay, hours, right. not yeah. months, so using tools that are on the, the internet to help you. And I wanna leave you with this. If you've been an entrepreneur or had an entrepreneurial mind, you probably enjoy working alone. But keep in mind that part of digital entrepreneurship and global entrepreneurship is making those strategic partnerships that will open 10 times more doors than you can open on your own. It is key to working smarter, not harder, and to unlock a global marketplace. Where I can be of help in my company, I encourage you to reach out. I thank you, I thank the TIC for giving me an opportunity to grow my business and I, I, I wish the best for everyone else. Okay, thank you so much, um, uh, Stacey. Uh, that, that's really some good points there. Now, I know that your firm revolutionized how quality web and mobile applications are built and delivered. Uh, you're also very involved in cybersecurity. I want you to tell us at this time, uh, what are some of the threats uh, to cybersecurity and digital that digital entrepreneurs should be aware of? Yeah, absolutely. Hackers are, um, they look for opportunity. They uh, look for, for people or businesses that are not secure. And so small businesses, um, new, dig, new digital entrepreneurs are at, at risk more so than ever through phishing, through, um, through spam or spyware. There's many different ways of malware, many different ways where they will try to attack. And so I encourage every entrepreneur to go and do their research. There's training online of best practices to factor authentication, firewalls, antivirus, not clicking on emails that have strange uh, domain names. And so make sure you start because there is actually a 60% chance that if a small business is attacked, that they will not last six months. So we want everyone to last. <laughs> we want them to grow and to succeed. So keep in mind that hackers will go after you because they know that you do not have a team of cybersecurity analysts working for you. So you have to do your own uh, due diligence. Okay, we're gonna take a, a social media question here. How can an entrepreneur moving his or her business from a brick and mortar establishment to a fully digital setup? Yeah, well, some of the tools that I mentioned, you can, be, you can create a website um, literally in about an hour. There's sites like GoDaddy and Wix that make it easier now than ever to even set up an e-commerce site, to set up um, a, a site that allows you to do um, services development, take payments online. Um, it seems very difficult but uh, they have really, especially now since the pandemic, made it easier than ever for restaurants to get online and to have online delivery, pickup of clothing. There's, they, they understand, um, these technologies understand where we are right now in the world with COVID and they're making solutions every week to make sure that people and brick and mortar can get online and continue to be successful with their business. Okay, Ms. Stacy Kirk there, thank you very much. We're going to take a break. Don't move the dial there. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. You're watching the seventh annual John Duncan Memorial Lecture, and we have been speaking with Tyrone Wilson and uh, Stacy Kirk, entrepreneurs. Uh, now, just before we take uh, some more social media questions, I want to go first to uh, Tyrone Wilson. Tyrone, you were actually taking us on a five-point journey, yeah. five steps to digital entrepreneurship. I just want you to close in on, those, on that journey for us, please. Okay, so quickly, it's a browse stage, compare, contemplate the acquisition, which is a purchase by the customer, and of course, the customer repeating um, another purchase. Okay. And um, some more questions now. We'll take some more questions on, from social media. And uh, before we go, um, I don't know if this is where you want to come in, Pat, because we don't yeah, have much time. To, uh, so we can have a full yeah. some discussion, you know, because <laughs> Stacy made a really nice presentation a while ago. Congratulations, yeah. Stacy, yes. as well as you know, Tyrone. We know um, of yeah. Tyrone's thing on the ground. But I want us to relate this a little bit to Jamaica. Yes and the Jamaican landscape Agreed. because we don't have the same level of penetration mm -hmm. of um, the digital, our digital footprint is not as wide. Right. How do we see us deepening that process in Jamaica of the digital entrepreneurship? Yeah, so I think a lot of, a lot of it now is moving to the mobile devices. Right. And I think we have a, a, a strong penetration there and the access to data and so forth is getting more you know, available amongst you know when when we talk about my view on digital entrepreneurship is it it can't just be the big businesses you know right. it's a little man in half a tree the vendor you know who can make payment collect have that stored in a digital wallet push his business online and attract his customers and make his money so there are many tools available on the mobile devices for people like those on the go that can grow so, in that space. So we'll be developing that whole mobile wallet would be a critical part of it, it's, is it's what critical. I would think, in yes. terms of how we develop the regulation around that in Jamaica. Yes. It would be a critical input. It's one of the endurance happen. right now. I find people use WhatsApp space. a lot for business. Yes. Mm -hmm. WhatsApp, you know, rather than creating a website, I don't know what your experience is in Jamaica. And a solid marketing tool too. For yes. Them because all of your, your, your contacts are there. That's like the quickest way to reach them. Um, you know, in anything that you're putting out, any communication, any um, new product, any new service, it's right there. Okay, I don't want to leave out our audience, of course, the, mm -hmm. our viewers sending the question, and Stacy is right there with us over in California. Stacy, this question is for you. Which businesses, or what <laughs> kind of business do you think can be fully converted to a digital business? Well, that's a, that's a great question. I think I'm ambitious, so I'll say that Almost all of them can be. Um, what, what I'll say is take your business, whatever your business idea is, and go online and search for that exact same name um, across the, the globe. Um, and you can see if there are other companies that have done it successfully. Things that I thought would be very hard to do, like um, buying clothes, for example, especially clothes that are more fitted, I thought would be extremely difficult to do. Um, but there are companies out there that have figured out a pattern, an algorithm of how to do it well. Um, I definitely think that buying, uh, buying e-commerce, if you have a shop, um, putting that online is um, easier than ever. The only part that is a little bit difficult in Jamaica is how you get those payments. And that's why I encourage strategic partnerships with people that can help you um, where you may get stuck in terms of how you deal with the digital wallet that we were talking about. One viewer asking, what is taxation like when it comes to fully digital or virtual business? Good question. It's open to anyone. <laughs> well, I think I, I, would, I would throw to Tyrone, who is in a fully digital space. Huh? Well, I think it's the same. <laughs> I don't think that's something, I mean, any government would actually want it to escape um, at the end of the day. It's the same, but you, you've seen in, in parts around the world where companies find tax havens, you know, like Apple the other day with um, Ireland. Mm -hmm. and so forth with benefits um, to, you know, expand. But it's, it's going to be the same yeah, over time. Okay. So thanks. wherever you collect your revenues, you're going to pay your taxes you're gonna for those revenues. Mm -hmm. And That's sometimes double thing. taxation, and double, which is uh, yes. more dangerous. And we have some double taxation yes. treaties which make it easier. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you have to work out how to f make, file those returns yes. and do it legally. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
you know. An opportunity there, if anybody wants to take it on, is really making things easier for Jamaican entrepreneurs to open businesses. Yes. If you can find a way to simplify that for Jamaicans, yeah. Yeah, that's a great, great mm -hmm. opportunity. Mm -hmm. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Giles, you're in the business. We're in the business of um, producing graduates to meet the market. Here's a question that I would love for you to share with us. Do you think that small economies and countries such as ours can be ready to benefit fully from the fourth industrial revolution, especially as this is dependent on the internet? Are we ready? Yes, I think we are ready. And one of the most important things is for both private and public sectors to invest in our young people. Young people are digital natives. Yes. Whereas yes. persons my age and older, we are digital migrants. Right. I remember the first cell phone coming to Jamaica, the fridge, they used to call it. Many young people don't even know what the fridge looked like. Mm -hmm. But in the digital space, this is something that they have grown up with and they are comfortable in it. And young people are natural risk takers. And so if we can invest in mentoring our young people. I think it provides one of the greatest opportunities for impacting Jamaica and transforming our society and our economy into a digital one. Yes, and just before Stacey leaves us, um, because we are running out of time just now, Stacey, you have the uh, benefit of Jamaica and another country, US. What is the difference, would you say, generally? Um, in terms of digital entrepreneurship? Yes. Well, I, I do believe some of the challenges in terms of payment processing um, and just access were a problem. I, but I do think because of the pandemic, um, there are border, we, we've opened up our borders. And so the opportunities now um, are broader than ever. And so I, I do think some of the, some of the challenges are just how, how to access day. tools that maybe were not as accessible or training that was maybe not accessible unless you were on site and in person. Um, but I'm, I'm excited because I think now people see that even if you are a U.S. citizen, you may be working from the other side of the world. And so there's opportunities there now to get access to the supplies you need, the services you need, um, even if you are in Jamaica. Another social media question coming up. In what way has um, COVID, or ways, have COVID, has COVID-19 accelerated the need for more digital entrepreneur? Tyrone. Well, I think, that, I think it has changed the entire um, perception of how, how we do business, not just in Jamaica, but around the world. And I mean, even when we look here, you know, I see a lot of restaurants um, beginning to deliver, like quick service restaurants who are now delivering and so forth. And we've seen several startups in terms of food delivery, mm -hmm. right? Um, we've seen several solutions as it relates to e-commerce platforms, education, schools, just look at, you know, how we've been disrupted and how we have to come up with solutions to, to really change the game. A um, couple companies like one-on-one, um, Eddie Focal, who are doing some, you know, real pivoting in, to ensure that individuals continue to learn from primary and prep school to high school, universities and so forth. So it has changed a lot, but I think, you know, once we remain entrepreneurial, like um, Joan Duncan you know, to see the opportunities and be pioneers. She was pioneer in the financial services. We have to now be pioneers in the payment service, in education and so forth, so that Jamaica is not left in the dust because we're now in the fourth industrial revolution. So it's very important for us now. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Tyrone. Stacey, uh, what's your final word? I just say be bold. This is, this is an opportunity where some people are going to be very successful. Um, and there are others that are going to be uh, challenged. But I encourage people, if you have an idea, now is the time. Every Everything that I mentioned today is easier now to do than ever before. So um, be fearless and be bold. Thank you, and thank you so much for joining us for this wonderful lecture, the Joan Duncan Memorial Lecture, the seventh lecture, and this has been simply great. Many thanks to all those who made it possible. Thanks to 
uh, the John Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics and Leadership at the University of Technology, Jamaica, the JMMB John Duncan Foundation, Mr. Tyrone Wilson, founder, president and CEO of iCreate Institute, and Ms. Stacy Kirk, CEO of Quality Works Consulting Group. Thank you for tuning to this program. We look forward to seeing you next year. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon and remember, wear your mask, sanitize and practice social distancing.